this way. No, contact! Hold the line! Yep, they're taking fire. And we're live. Wow. What a fucking intro right there. Yeah. Hello. It's we're back. Your favorite boys are back now. We're back. Let's just get it started here. We're presented by your fearless leader, Razor. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Our very own favorite grandpa. Well, I have to say, just comment on Razor's uh, uh, bad greeting there. It needs to be more gruff. He is the leader of the biggest clan of Foxhole, so it needs to be a bit more better than that. So, can we have another one from Razor there? Uh, a, a war cry, or what? Yeah. No, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, yours truly, myself. Hello. But uh, let's not shine the light on us. We have a special guest star. Let's, uh, let's give him a bright, warm welcome. Probably the first and maybe only time here in the podcast. We have Kaczynski. Greetings. Afternoon. Good evening. Whatever it is for you. It is an honor to have you with us here, yeah, my friend. I'm a bit 50-50 about it, but it is what it is. <laughs> I wasn't in the room in this uh, decision, but I'll accept it. Thank you for the follow, you non so oh, I never, I never thought Kaz got uh, enough praise. <laughs> enough praise. Uh, thank you for following Zah. Um, for uh, his action in the breach of blemish, and I would like to uh, showcase that uh, that clip so everybody understands what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about Kaz taking the breach of blemish. So new people of the clan might not have been around back then, but it was a pretty legendary action, I have to say. Uh, and it's one that is definitely in the Death Corps history books as uh, one of our best siege actions ever. So I don't know if you want to bring that up, Riz. That might be a good way to start the stream. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I'm just going to take me a second to to find a video from Kaz. Um, if it hasn't talking... even been it hasn't even been fucking two minutes, and we already derailed from the fucking plan. Yeah, it, Fuck it's Kaz. all right with this is fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just put this on screen at least. Why don't you guys uh, chat for a bit, and I'll I'll look for the video. It wasn't even in order. We just moved straight to closing remarks. Shut it all down. Close. <laughs> 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 all right. Catch you later. But um, this is the last one. I think we need to talk about the uh, the purpose behind this uh, this stream that we're planning on doing every month, um, and it's we've we've had the opinion that uh, a lot of um, discussions in the community, um, especially on things like streams and uh, media that are uh, viewed by a lot of people, um, tend to be quite biased in their opinion of the game Foxhall. Um, and it's a game that everybody on the stream absolutely loves. Um, but it isn't without its flaws and it isn't without its uh, uh, things that need to be discussed that aren't discussed um, by other uh, streamers and, and things like that. So we wanted to uh, bring those things to light and give people a place to discuss those things freely. Uh, and, 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 and have those gone. conversations that we need to have about the game that we love. We just got that beautiful following right now. Thank you, Paz. Hope you enjoyed that. Right. Um, let's uh, let's jump into the video if uh, if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Crawling on the wall. Oh he my very god, dead. you had him surrounded. Yeah, I saw that. This is only the first. Oh, no, fuck it. Come on, no. Right, okay, go. Charge him, charge him uh, directly across the road. It was something that uh, has gone down 
as one of the best things that's ever happened and the play that Kaz makes here is just uh, absolutely immense. We we don't get many men across the street initially, uh, but you can see he's instantly uh, looking for those for those enemies to take out and uh, to secure the ground for the few people that did manage to get over. Uh, Cass, one of our best medics, uh, is behind him supporting him there, and uh, we got a good a good few skilled people across the road there. And they're just, yeah, they're securing the ground. And uh, you can see, you can hear on the radio that uh, we're getting call outs. That there's an MG near the uh, near the entrance, and uh, Cass is about to pick up on that and take him out. And, uh, it's crazy. Uh, when, what do you think about that, that one MG guy? That one NG guy was cutting our guys down, but because uh, we managed to get that early plane and get those men inside the breach. Uh, that's why we, we managed to get in there. Ain't quite there, Rizzo. If you want. Yeah, think, sure. Uh, we can't give him too much credit. He's only a guest, after all. So. No, no. I, I, that is that that needs to be respected right there, Doug. That is that's one of the best things I've ever seen. To tell you the truth. I give him that. I give him that. I take down a whole region, but uh, no one ever gives me a hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> But let's uh, let's let the silent warriors, you know, let's give a moment of silence for them. Now introductions. So, Kaz, you're 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 the new guy here. Tell us uh, tell us what makes you entitled to be on the podcast and uh, what position you hold in in the clan itself. Yeah, yeah, sure. So just real real quick, I've been playing since I was 15 years old. So what about 18, 19, 20 years of gaming mostly in the first person shooter realm Voxel actually was when i picked it up i guess about a year or two ago pretty new for me as a like over the head shooter but fell in love with it uh with what it offered with the concept uh and uh joined dk immediately got involved uh and played my heart out with this with this team and with this crew and and really learned what Voxel was about in organized gameplay right because that's where it really really shines and where you can just have a blast uh and so uh was was more than happy to continue to help and, and to had the privilege to to lead here and there and i currently work with the uh administration primarily with the infantry uh as an infantry officer i do some lcing from time to time uh and uh just have really really enjoyed learning this game with you know some guys that played it for a long time and have really permitted me to kind of bring my own i guess experience in from competitive shooters did a lot of competing in the battlefield series even counter-strike for a little while so uh, it's been really, really fun to kind of bring that to a game that offers such a large scale when you bring 40, 50, 60 guys together. So, it's a yeah, little bit. absolutely. And uh, what's the, what are you positioning within our clan structure? I'm in the Adeptus Administratum. A little light, he's also uh, one he's of the head boys. boys. One of the head boys for, uh, for our famous infantry battalion. Or uh, the Reductus Ducks. Let's give those a little, a little, a little clap for. Uh, uh. <laughs> the heresy hit get too far already, Doc. Don't yeah, they're, they're the probably ducks. one of the most funnest ones. Uh, just do, do, we'll do a quick reminder for for the rest of us three. So I'm Dark Leftovers. I'm part of the Adeptus Stratum as well. And uh, mainly more the head of the artillery department of the big boom, with the biggest darker. And then we have Avidus here. Here, take take the mic. I am uh, I am part of a uh, I can't I don't can't even remember what rank I am. <laughs> um, Kriegsman. Ah oh, yes, I'm yes. a lowly Kriegsman these days, subjugated to the ranks for my many war crimes against new recruits to the clan and. Uh, the wider community, but uh, I found if only that wasn't true. If only that wasn't true. <laughs> I know, I know. If uh, I found my place, uh, and uh, I've watched Kaz be my second, and then rise to be my overlord. So he's here now to fully take my place as uh, infantry leader. The one thing I always desired to be. You're killing me. Someday, someday, <laughs> until you get mad. Then. They, grow up. they grow up so fast. <laughs> then, Razor, give us, uh, as we as we kneel to you, please, Razor, introduce yourself. 
Yeah, let's not do the whole roles and stuff. Yeah, it's enough to know that I'm the co-leader of the clan. Uh, everything else is already overspoken. Uh, these days I just uh, mangle my brains into the mechanized aspect of the game, which is hopefully going to get improved with the uh, update, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Um, just going to message uh, mention also that uh, the Discord is available for you guys if you if you want to join us on there if you're not already there and I know Dark if there's anything else you want on the introduction or can we move on to to our first topic get the ball, topic? Rolling. Get the ball, get the ball rolling. rolling okay ah a good topic right there about the warden clans having a big break. I think uh, I think you guys have got more information on this. I only know anything in regards to ours, but you can give us a full detail. Yeah, so I don't want to really focus on the cause of the break as much as like not the breaking point because it was literally more related to uh, you know as it is in our community most of the time griefing and uh, tricking people. Uh, of the other side mostly but uh, there is a sentiment in the warden faction at least when when we're talking about clans that uh, the game has become almost unplayable because of uh, different aspects in the, the main one being the the same one the, uh, regarding griefing regarding alts and um, not a lot being done about this um, I feel like it, it is needed to be said as an update to the situation since uh, I understand that the developers now handle the moderation of the game directly instead of um, having a mod team to, to do it for them. So now all the tickets and all the mod mail gets to the actual developers. So it's going to be interesting to see how that is going to evolve. But... Um, I think we can we can discuss a bit about our motiv our motivation as eighty two DK and uh, maybe not a lot of people know this, but we have been going with our operations for three years now, I believe, without any yes, three yeah, years straight break. without a single. I mean, there's been ups and downs, but every every weekend for three years straight, we've given at least that that Saturday for about what like six hours six hours for the dedicated ones like the fully ones they're committed to just stick there and just rough it out yep. to give colonials hell some people that have uh, haven't missed a saturday for like a year straight you know what i mean i mean it's it's their it's their hobby you know it's it's something that we've really taken seriously and um we've really got behind the idea of of at least challenging the colonials uh, on a saturday once a week and obviously that's expanded over time um, as we've got larger and as we've got more organized um, we've been able to meet that quarter and then some even as the games developed in a, a wider uh, warfare sort of state yeah and a bit back towards of uh, the, the reason we decided on the break um, i think the game has reached a critical point where um, without the updates that are soon to come um, at least for the old people involved into it that have been through a lot of uh, variations of the game and a lot of I don't know, ways to play it this has been feeling as the worst I, I, I'm going to speak for myself here mostly but out of what we have seen in the past uh, we were never in a place where um, every time you would basically come online would, would feel more, more like a burden than you know than than an actual uh, fun time um and i think we should probably take uh Kaz's point here because he's he's saw the game um like for what now Kaz, a year or so so you're not really familiar with uh mm -hmm. with the old as much as we are so you probably the have old a grumpy vet exactly yeah. a different perspective than us yeah, for sure. Like from in, from my perspective, I definitely saw kind of the burnout both in, you know, myself and, you know, the guys that we were playing with. And, you know, we kind of had a couple different reactions. Some guys kind of 
just broke off entirely, frankly. Like we, we had some guys just kind of disappear on us for two, three, four weeks without kind of a word's notice. And, and they just weren't having fun anymore. And, it, you know, when you kind of talk about it and try to ask the why, it's really hard to kind of get to the bottom of why that is. Because a lot of the elements have been unchanged. But I think, you know, when you look at the frustration level from – players and from leaders, squad leaders, uh, a lot of it had uh, a significant amount to do with some of the like the little niche things that drive us crazy and organized play, just getting out of control. And I feel like almost being used against us it, like with more frequently. I'll just border crossings is one example. Like I felt like in the last couple months leading up to the break, it, it was every single operation we'd have significant portions of our team stuck in a border crossing nightmare. And these are guys – taking time out of their Saturday to sit at a border for an hour, hour and a half uh, at a time. And that's just, I mean, when you think about that and you know, compare that to any other casual gaming experience, that's insanity. And there'd be little things like that that just kind of stack up. Uh, and I think that those things really just started to take a toll as they have been going on week after week after week with no hope of uh, being resolved. And so that, that that's kind of my perspective on it. on kind of what drove it. Cause it's hard, like you, it's hard to get to the parts of the game that are so phenomenal when there are so many other what, what a lot of people feel are just stupid issues, like easy with possibly easy possible easy solutions, or at least an attempt to solution that make people feel hopeless about the situation. I've always taken one thing as a good measurement of how the game is going, and if uh, AE2DK finds it hard to do something, or finds it. Uh, on annoying to do something like fielding a certain vehicle for instance or coming by a certain resource to do a certain thing then i've always found that's a good indicator that everybody's finding it very very hard to do those things if we're finding it difficult because we've we've got the manpower to do anything the game requires of us putting together a rocket we can do it ourselves you know and that's and you know putting together a um a storm cannon, for instance, we can do that ourselves. You know what I mean? If we are finding it difficult to do things like that, or you know, come by a certain resource or something like that, at least the, these small groups of people that are coming on, in in you know, friends groups of three and four and things like that, they haven't got a hope of fielding something like a battle tank for an extended period of time. And sure. even if they do, uh, if they come fresh onto the game and they say we want to specialize in tanks, for instance, and they put a week's worth of effort into learning everything that uh, is required just to field a tank and then they manage to do so just get into the front and then losing that tank um in a very short period of time because of the at capabilities of, of modern warfare on foxhole it's it's it takes a long time for, for them to develop skills that would allow them to survive on the front and they're not allowed that time um because just to field a battle tank or whatever they wanted to field would take an exorbitant amount of time just to field it. And that needs to change if they wanted to make it like, this is something that I've always found very um, like countermanding that the, the devs always talk about. They want to make the game for everybody. They want to, they always emphasize, or at least they did, um, that they wanted to make a game that could be played by a lot of people. Uh, you didn't. They emphasised the fact that you didn't need to be in a clan or something like that, or it didn't be, need to be in a large group of people to do these things. And every patch that uh, has come out, it seems to have gotten harder and harder to do those things as an individual. And they seem to be going away from that vision. But at the same time, they don't seem to be uh, involved in a great deal with the clan community. Um, so they. I, I, I can't understand where they're coming from with this. Um, and it's been their position for as long as I can remember. Right. Um, you guys have any more thoughts on on the, the break? I think we, we kind of touched on it uh, mostly here. Um, and considering how much uh, or how big the, the update is, uh, you guys want to wanna proceed to, to discussing... Uh, the first part of the update because it's not uh, the entire update yet. Yeah, we could do that. We've this is this is a touchy subject that we don't need to spend all the time talking about. It's um it's probably worth mentioning as well that uh, Kaz has not watched or experienced anything from this new update, so he'll be uh, reacting to what he sees uh, for the first time. Yeah, so just act like this is an actual uh, dev stream, but not really. But 
<laughs> taken from the actual dev stream. Yeah, he's heard rumors, but he's never uh, he's never saw it from himself. So it's a you know, beautiful moment for it right now. Yeah, so um, let's jump right in it, I guess. Um, and the first thing to to discuss thank you for here, the follow, you non-essential scum. aside from the the follow here, thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, and I hope you guys appreciate uh, <laughs> the little flavor text from Avitus there. Um, roads, roads are getting a roads a a one hundred percent makeover. Roads. In the eye, uh, words of the devs, uh, instead of paint, there's actually dirt this time. So <laughs> I, I was hoping for a new water texture. You know what I mean? It has been a, a full like six months since we got another one. So <laughs> I mean, this is a very uh, like, I don't, like I mean, I feel like you could have condensed this phrase into something more significant than just putting the damn roads. I mean, I mean, well, you might I don't know how they feel about it. I'll be honest with you, but roads. I I put them because there 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 is an important aspect that at least I think to to discuss here aside from the fact that I want to tell everybody that no you cannot upgrade them because some people were like almost certain uh you'll you'll be able to get a hammer and start hammering the road to upgrade it to the next tier um the discussion here is each uh each area is going to have both uh actually it's going to have all of them all three types of them. And I, I, I honestly didn't remember the... Because the devs actually gave out some percentages. But the general idea is you're going to have way more of the tier 1 kind than of the tier 2 and tier 3 and so on. So... Are you going to be able to upgrade them? No, exactly. That, that's what I just told you. You can't upgrade right. them. It's basically road scarcity at this point. So <laughs> you're going to have... Right roads that are going to be way more better to use you know th there is a an argument to be made here that i think it's mainly the main roads yeah yeah you can you can like i, mean, I think it's, this is going to be one of those things where it's just going to be, be a case of uh we'll just have to wait and see you know what i mean it's it's not it's not something where you can say it's going to be bad or it's going to be good you know what i mean it, it might change well, the game completely i think it will to tell you the I truth can... I can tell you right now that uh, tier three is going to be the colonial side, and tier one is going to be the warden side. <laughs> <laughs> well, regard like so, if if this works properly and it's implemented properly, this is a net good because there is, I, I think, universally a problem with the time it takes to move supplies. And if there, if this is done well and you can efficiently move supplies sa safely through regions that you control, and you're not taking thirty minutes for a truck delivery, this is good. This is, addresses a huge problem that this game experiences right now. So I don't have an issue. I, I, again, has a good possibility. Does it affect speed though? Like, what does what what does grip well, and rolling dis resistance mean though? I would to me, presume it just means so. when you turn. I would presume that that means you can go faster because you're getting less resistance. Yes, mark, yeah, that hopefully. that is generally the idea. At least this is how I perceive it. Um, the better the road, the the faster you go on it, and and so on and so forth. Why wouldn't um, they just say it like that though? That's like, I think it, it, it well, might, it, it might even the opportunity for more roads on the map. And I think that's probably going to be a thing as well, where you're going to have these tier three main roads going between the towns on the map. And then you're going to have more of these dirt paths leading off those main roads now, going into the center of these grassy areas um, that we that we could only access. It was just a plain field before. You're probably going to find there's going to be one of these dirt roads running through it now. To that's why I imagine it. To answer your question, they didn't put it like that. Uh, it's because it, it also comes in with the new physics engine for the vehicles. So, you know, that's basically a translation for it, right? Uh, minimal rolling resistance means the vehicle is going to be rolling faster, which it means more speed. So they kind of wanted to incorporate it with, well, I'll get to that slide. Actually, we can we can switch to it because like the roll one is not, <laughs> not that interesting to look at anyway. Um, and what I'm like partially af like not not afraid, but I don't know if you guys know. There's a site somebody made. It's basically called Logiways or something like that. And you can you can put where you're at and where you want to go, and it's gonna calculate for you the the shortest route or the best route and stuff like that. What GPS and Foxhole? Yes, yes, that's actually already a thing. But with the roads, it's Callahan Maps. <laughs> with the roads that's going to be even better now where's his name uh, right 
let's go on the, uh, the the vehicle mechanics I guess the the realistic physics system um, which is pretty pretty interesting um, I'm not gonna I mean we can show the dev blog as well if you guys want but I just saw something really cool in the dev blog they actually put uh, some some effort into uh, visuals as well so you're gonna actually see the the soldiers in the vehicles in the open top vehicles like swivel in the direction of of the car going and all of that stuff i think that's pretty i think, I don't think that's going to make for some uh, quite comedic uh, yes scenes yes that's going to be pretty pretty interesting uh oh it's actually on screen as well body movement based on inertia and so on their trail effects um i don't i, I think this is a win i'm curious to something to, i want to know though is um have they implemented vehicle damage from impact now? So crushing the car, for instance. I think Does that's it... to be discussed at the moment. I, they, right. I don't think anyone said anything. I, I can be mm. wrong if I said someone did a QA question on it, but I, I can't give a confirmed answer there is, on that. There is something else that you, like, uh, you probably wouldn't think about, but if, I, I mean, I wouldn't imagine they have talked about this, but say someone is killed while driving one of these things at full speed, does it keep going or does it stop dead like it it does now all of those that, answers I mean, are still in in play mm -hmm. we don't really yeah, know exactly it's interesting, interesting yes yeah, so. i would assume just like how you would think out is because even then i mean um think about when uh let's say you're driving full speed and your character's driving and he bleeds to death you, you still go with a decent like not decent but you still go a couple of inches forward you don't just stop right out even when you get off a truck when you just press q to get out I'm assuming it would still keep its its physics as if you were not to press anything because they did add a uh, an actual button to handbrake to do a hard stop. So I would assume if you kill the driver, it will still keep going for whatever momentum it pushed itself. Yeah, okay. But I think what what good thing this is is that they're actually giving real real life physics to these to these vehicles is that uh, towing could be a possibility, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good, that's a good point, actually. That's yeah. like the only thing that I mean, you, you couldn't tow anything previously because it, it would not work as what you would think because there was no physics in anything. You know, what I mean, like they would just yeah. ice skate around as if you know, like that dip did nothing. See, this now, part of the leaves. this part of the vehicle update, I I haven't got a problem uh, with this part of the vehicle update at all. To tell you the truth, this needed doing in Foxhall at Sim Stage, and it might well have been now. So I have no problem with it, um, and I I like the fact that they haven't gone as far as to, you know, be able to tip your tank over on its head or something like that because that would have been ridiculous. But uh, you know, adding this physics in and adding inertia is, is a a long way to go towards making the game look you know how it's supposed to look. Yeah, it definitely it's a it's a, there's a definite plus one to that. I'm not gonna I can't complain anything about this. This is like not gonna lie like what easily forty percent of the game is vehicles, so it's like. Yeah. Hey, that's that's a big plus one that you made them more immersive. So, hey, I'm not going to complain. Something, something that is uh, very interesting though is the um, the prospect of different uh, damage states for the vehicle. Different, you know, different parts um, of the vehicle can get. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll get there. I guess um, I I know I have it in in the in the slide here. Um, I see. First, we we have the fuel one. We can like pass it real quickly. So basically, now. Um, this is pretty interesting. You can use both fuel uh, variation again on, on all vehicles. It's just a case of efficiency now. I think this is good because, uh, like I was talking about earlier on, with groups of friends coming on, and you know, there might only be three or four of them. Uh, if they want to take a tank out, they can now with diesel. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Um, it's just obviously going to consume a lot more, and they're not going to be as fast. Um, when you want to really min max stuff as you know clans would probably will uh, and things like that then you're probably going to be using uh, refined petrol and things like that and i think that's a that's a really good move to tell you the truth i'm i'm quite uh, pleased by that even though it doesn't really make a lot of sense <laughs> yeah let's, let's spin this let's spin this towards kaczynski how do you feel about about this so far buddy uh this is not my wheelhouse you mentioned vehicles i tuned out <laughs> but you you wow. must be happy about the fuel though you, you yeah, can't yeah, tell yeah. me you're not happy about this well you might <laughs> no, you might be happy later good. on 
It, it's all I good, but I think you will yeah, be happier later on to tell you the truth. My main, my main thing is like, how, can can I can I kill it as an infantryman still or not? That, that's it. Because like, oh, it's, I want to get as little it, time it, in vehicles as possible. I think It'll be it, more immersive be, for you. I think it's something about the modular vehicle uh, yeah. thing. It's okay. definitely going to be that infantry get a a more plausible role to play in uh, tank destruction. Don't spoil it for even it. larger tanks like tanks and stuff like that. Can you say that again, Razor? No, I was just saying, don't spoil it for him on the on the vehicle uh, right. variation. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to. Before, before we talk about... Can you go back to the previous slide, Razor? We'll sure. talk about tank armor. I do want to say about... I do have open concerns regarding uh, the fuel, since they made diesel available for everything. And petrol is for, you know, making your vehicles drive faster. It's, it's just me being a little, a little either pessimistic or a bit uh, paranoid, but I feel like they're going to fuck with the values of, because right now, e even getting um, petrol, it's a, it's a pain in the ass. But like, what well, what do you guys think that if, you know, they might mess with the, the fuel rates or how in general, just the amount of fuel you're getting, you know? Well, from what we understood from the stream, but again, anything might change uh, in the end. Um, the diesel will be what the uh, petrol is now. So if you put diesel in a barrel tank, it should act normally Same. as before, right? The uh, bonus would be adding the petrol, right? The petrol would uh, improve... Uh, combustion basically and make the vehicle go faster or probably steer faster and so on and so forth something like that so what we are supposed to see here is not a downgrade in any way for anything just an upgrade where petrol is used right i'm not i'm not talking about that i'm talking about the world spawning and the resources of oh. you get me like since it's you know the petrols even is being pretty much the premium currency of of the of the fuel you know it's is it going to be more like are they going to mess with the values of it making it more rarer because right now we have a big problem with scarcity and uh the acquiring of of fuels to fuel your machine is haven't been that great yeah um, i've heard this question going around a lot of people concerned about maybe petrol coming in under fire now from from the developer team making it more scarce i guess we're gonna have to see about this one I, if I'm not mistaken, the second part of the dev stream is going to tell us more about the logistical side. But I would say, hopefully, if they leave it alone as is, as is now, I think then you know, like uh, like Avatus was saying, everybody is going to be, uh, you know, well uh, well suited to take any vehicle out, uh, at, at least fuel wise, you know, ammunition wise. It's a it's a different That's another matter. Exactly. We're not talking about that. Drive it out. You might not be able to fire it, lads. <laughs> <laughs> you can move them, but you can't shoot them. I feel like you're going to be saying that a lot, though, Ray Razor. Like, we'll see in a, when when the second when the second part comes out. Yeah, we'll, we'll have be the to. the quote of the stream. We'll have to. We'll just have to. Uh, you, you, with my blessing, you may go to the next the next slide. Ah, uh, namaste. Okay, so. Uh, I'm gonna shoot directly towards you, Dark, because if you remember, we worked hard on that one video. <laughs> yeah, so so long ago, like literally, I think it was like a, a week or two. We not before. I'm talking about like about a good year ago. We uh, we made a a PSA video, video yeah, yeah. on. I watched that on tank ricocheting. You know, just to just to help people to bring bring knowledge awareness that hey, you know, your shots could ricochet off and it, it, without a doubt it was a bug feature in the game didn't it look anything crazy but you know we, we did an informative video on where and how to properly avoid and to you know properly station your tanks then about a week or two later they patched it and that video became obsolete and we were just like laughing the whole time but now it's back it's back and uh better than ever so uh here we have let's see just just to flex shots wow we can we can retitle the video to be uh you know back back to date we don't have to edit anything just repost it 
Exactly. Yeah, it probably is going to work as intended. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, we're hoping there's going to be a few, a few um, differences. The most notable one, at least that I understood from the dev stream, was uh, that different vehicles are going to have different weaknesses and such, and that's going to be good, if you ask me. I think that's going to add another layer of uh, knowledge, especially for people that enjoy this sort of uh, vehicle battles Absolutely. in the game. Um, uh, I'm I mean, gonna actually move on to that one, so we can actually see what I'm. Yeah. I mean, it's, one thing it's worth talking. It's worth talking about that. I mean, I think they mentioned this briefly on the stream, but since the conception of tanks on Foxhall, it's never really been. I mean, it's been a lot to do with positioning and things like that, and viewing things through binoculars and waiting and being patient. It's not really come down to sort of like. Uh, hasn't got that extra layer that it needed like that you were talking about and now uh, with that i think that it's going to really give good tank crews a place to shine so you're going to get battle tanks walking through you know 10 tanks if if those tanks aren't got experienced crews and stuff doesn't matter about the strength of the guns really if you're experienced enough you know where to hit it dark you, you wanted to to jump in uh with the what the tank subsystems and this and this whole slide yeah, I, I felt you wanted to to jump in before I was just my second. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, this is also this is probably in like a, a wet dream for me. As uh, probably a good twenty five percent of the clan love Company of Heroes, some a little too, too too much, but you know, whatever. But uh, they made it so depending on where you attack a armored vehicle, you know, it it can actually have certain effects. So as you can see in the uh, picture right here. You know, if you focus on the turret, there's a good chance you can disable said turret. And same thing with its, you know, fuel system and its tracks. You know, you can just completely fuck it over. And w with with that being said, though, it's like it just feels like the best thing you want to aim for, though, is just just go straight for the Kahuna and go for the go for the turrets. You know, I mean, if you shut it down, its capability to fire back, it's it's a dead vehicle. You know. But it also opens up if you want to steal vehicles more reliably track them and then you can gas them out yeah. yeah that's also true that's also true i think it's it's worth mentioning um the the first time that i saw our battle tank uh, i remember remarking about how its tracks were exposed on the upper side of its hull and everybody laughed at me it doesn't matter you know the tank is a you know one health block it doesn't really matter about what it, you know what it shows on the model now that we're you know we're going to have artillery dropping on these tracks it's not it's i don't think the battle tank is going to be as used as the colonial one it, but that's yeah. just my they did I, I remember they did say certain certain armored vehicles have a did they have different values representing on what they look like so what you're saying is 100 percent yep. what's going to happen and it sucks because i i never liked the war and bt the look of it either and like looking at it now i'm just saying like okay well this thing's gonna be it's gonna, need to a pit, it's gonna need a pit crew like every like every battle you know what i mean because it's gonna be going down look at you big doll <laughs> <laughs> uh, well out of all of them because you know kaz was mentioning the um, the capturing of vehicles i think probably ruptured fuel tank is the the, the actual the best one if you think about it because especially for a battle tank we all know how little they can move with a full <laughs> a full tank so if you raptor uh, a fuel tank and he's out and exposed he's probably not going to make it home so yeah it's it's going to be really interesting to see the different um you know mechanics and what what vehicles are going to get what uh, what perks Cause like avitus was pointing out if if the warden battle tanks doesn't get um uh, a, a, a bigger chance of being tracked then something's wrong you know like look at those tracks I don't think it's I don't think it's just the fact that the tracks are exposed. I think it's just the fact that you can hit them from the top of the tank. So when you like you're gonna get artillery shells that are arcing down on the tank and that's probably the biggest threat to something like a battle tank is getting tracked and then maybe enemy armor pushes up and finishes it off. But generally, uh when organized uh, uh colonial and warden forces are engaging each other it tends to be artillery that are striking these big targets first and when you get in shells arcing down on top of the tank it doesn't matter about the model of the tracks being there or anything like that it's just the fact that there's a damage state on the top no, of the tank no matter what it's, it's good enough you know 
Yeah, true. Um, enough about tracks, though. I think uh, I think we we took a nice look at that. Let's look at the the actual variation here, and this is where I think we can bring Kaz in for a first reaction, <laughs> looking Wake at up. the screen. Wake up, Kaz, <laughs> and seeing <laughs> the the madness of, of of variation here. What's uh, what's your take on it, Kaz? Overwhelming or how you yeah, say? Yeah, this like? is this is a sample. Remember, this is not. This is not yeah, a, sure. Not even a full. So, like the first, I guess the first issue that comes to mind is like how, producing so, these things, you know, and keeping up with them from a technology perspective. Don't worry like, about that. Don't worry about lot, that. Okay, we won't worry about that. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll worry about it. But take, just... it take it at face value, dude. Just take it at face value for now. Just look at it. Don't look at the armored cars, but look at everything else. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll just move in the second year so I can help him out with the idea. So, cause cause you br actually brought it up, I think this slide is the most explicit. Uh, basically, you're gonna be able to produce uh, all of them in a more uh, prototypish sort of way, as you know, like we, like we did that one experimental war. Hopefully, the prototyping system is not gonna be anything near that. I don't think it's gonna be. Mark said it's not, and I hope it's not because that was a, a disaster. It was like a slot machine. But um, the general idea is, uh, from from what it looks like, you're gonna have different tire vehicles. And then depending on what the faction produces more, so like if we go for more bikes than trucks, then the bikes are the ones that are we, we're going to keep and it's going to appear at all uh, vehicle factories and so on. So that's the general idea of it. Whatever we okay. mass produce more, we get them by default, So sort of a, a thing, you know. That's this also is replacing the, the tech tree as well. Right, it's uh, becoming e something completely reworked. Yes, again. yes. It it also replaces the the, the tech tree. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know details and writing about this one. Um, I think it's as simple as um, basically you're gonna get offered different vehicles on different tiers, you know, and then you're just gonna decide what you're going for. So that's basically the new tech tree. You know, you're gonna have to choose between this, this, and this. Whatever you produce more of, that's your new technology that you're going to keep and unlock. And so you'll have all three for a little while, and then two will be obsolete, and the others will be mass produced. Well, so, from what they, what they explained, you're going to be able to produce the obsolete one. Let's call them uh, as well, but it's going to be harder, so to say. You know, you're not going to have the convenience of just going walking up to the vehicle factory, taking a hammer and building it it's going to probably require extra steps, uh, basically, and uh, time and well, even this, failure. So this, uh, so this whole new system, do you think this is going to lock things behind more timers or less? Oof. Depending on what you mean by timers. Like in the mass production and things like that with Logi? Do you think it's going to be more beneficial or do you think it's going to... Well, the discussion... Timer? The discussion... They have, a, they have a habit of saying that, you know, that there's going to be less timers and then there always ends up being another timer. The discussion is there's going to be a competition inside of the factions now because you're going to want, uh, you know, AT2DK is going to want that vehicle because they use it more. Uh, War Navy is going to want water-based vehicles uh, and, you know, uh, a more armored-focused clan is going to want armored vehicles. And it's going to yeah. bring this uh, arms race because the name of the update is arms race. It's going to be this, bring this arms race between the organized, organized groups of the uh, the factions to rush produce as many as they can so they can get a lock on their favorite vehicle. Which, you know, it, it might not be a timer, but it's going to be uh, a burden for, lo <laughs> for Lodge. I, I feel like Lodge is going to go nuts on trying and securing whatever they like more, basically, for yeah, example. I mean, on, on the service, my, like, just kind of as you're talking, like, my, my initial reaction is overwhelmingly negative to this whole thing. And that's not, I mean, that should be too surprising because I have, like, a prejudice against vehicles anyway. So, I mean, that's just coming out of nowhere. It's but, infantry, but, infantry, infantry man through and through. So, but, I, you know, from, from a gameplay perspective, I don't know how, how this is going to work out in its current iteration. It's going to be one of those wait and see because it's so... Hard to get your mind wrapped Look at it this way. Look at this way, Kaz. I mean, there's more variety in things that go boom when you shoot rockets yeah, at them. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But you know, I don't. 
I just want to shoot the colonial infantry, dude. Like, if I'm shooting a boom boom at vehicles, let's get yeah, the infantry the, to get out the, so I can shoot the infantry. The colonial infantry do squeal louder than the they tank do going boom. every time. They'll, they'll come out on on flames, dude. Like you get to the glorious <laughs> of taking out the armored target. It should bring nothing but joy to you. But let's, yeah, can, can you bring us back? People, we need to uh, get away from this fantasy. Our colonial death, you know, can go off off the road pretty quickly. Let's go back to the the variation, so I can just show Kaz. Like there, there's some interesting things for him that he can he can see for for himself. Yeah, I mean, I do think there are. I mean, this this things that we've talked about before i mean i've talked about some of these things for fucking years on here that would be really really good uh, in introductions to fox report i talked about them maybe two years ago you know what i mean things like uh, the mg on the sidecar and stuff like that <laughs> why wasn't that in from the beginning um the truck uh, the i thought one of the the best vehicles that i saw showcased was the truck um the just the normal truck with the mg mounted on the roof that's sort of like the front guard to a convoy so like if uh, the, the convoy is uh, going through an area that's got partisan activity or anything like that, it, it at least has some kind of defense against that sort of thing. And I think that's been needed to be in the game for a very, very long time. Uh, I think uh, you're going to be finding that the truck's going to get unlocked pro, uh, pretty much all the time. You know, the I can see why people would get excited about some of this, but it, I'm just not yeah. digging it. It's just not, it's just not for me. I mean, there is a lot of, there's going to be a lot of problems. I mean, the, the, the Jeeps, for instance, I mean, you know, a colonial jeep with an RPG on the back, a warden jeep with an MG on the back. That's gonna—I mean, what do they think is gonna happen with that? They're just gonna—they're gonna go behind enemy lines. They're gonna—they're gonna absolutely annihilate Logi, and that type of thing. It's gonna be able to be done by two guys. You know what I mean? So if you're getting maybe eight of those going on at a time, it's very, very hard to do anything about it because they're gonna be all over the place because they're super mobile. But we already have that with like ACs, and we make fun of ACs relentlessly, except for a couple but, people. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, ACs don't have the capability to really do. do anything. And if they go off road, they're pretty much you know free real estate. But a jeep, especially the colonial ones, that have explosive power capability to uh, just annihilate you know whatever whatever force they have in front of them real quickly and easily. You know that that's the only thing that's that's really scary. You know what I mean? Like they could just easily. Like right now, we have already a backline issue of just like one or two guys coming in with a bunch of satchels in a jeep, exploding town halls and making everything white. You know, completely demoralizing the whole faction. Now add in that with a accompanied by a a RPG jeep. Now they don't have to waste extra slots getting smokes to try to sneak it in. They could just and I mean, think about it right now. When you load a uh, normal tank, you can load it up to 100 shells. Right now, I'm assuming you can load up to 100 rockets in there, and that's awful. Yeah, that, that would be insane. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's going to be like I always try and think about this like, uh, like if we were up against this, I would welcome it. You know what I mean? Because if we are up against this, then we have the resources to devote to go and attempting to stop it. You know what I mean? If one of our supply routes is under threat, we can send an armored section up there to deal with it or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, we can dispatch you to, to do something about it. But the average player on Foxhole, when he's doing a bit of logic on the back line, he's listening to a bit of music, this particular load's taking him three hours to make or whatever, and he's shipping it to the front and then, uh, you know, a couple of guys, you know, blasting Rickroll, jumps out of the... Out of the uh, out of the bushes with uh, one of these jeeps, it's not going to be a good time for those types of people. Yeah, um, we could fit a, a whole podcast talking about partisan and the states of the factions on that role. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to be a long one. Um, I'm just going to bring up because I won brought it up as well in in chat that uh, they basically said non AT weapons will have much lesser chance of damaging armor vehicles. So it appears that SMGs and like smaller arms are going to probably have a mechanic that's not going to allow them to do as much damage as before to vehicles so that's uh, mm. that's an interesting thing to, to so have. does that mean armored car might be the the best thing in the world is that what you're telling me that's, well, that's gonna be fearful we don't we don't know in what in what you know capacity of such but um, we'll, we'll we'll see how much uh, hopefully they're gonna explain more about what that means right because it can mean yeah. anything that's interesting that's interesting right uh, just to keep it rolling here let's um let's i just wanted on. to ask kaz about his his opinion on on the warden jeep with the mg on it that you can have with his infantry squad i mean oh. initially i'm not digging it 
but yeah, we'll, we'll give it a try. So uh, uh, everything will have its have its time when it uh, when the time when the update comes out, everything will be tested and field. So. And I, it, my opinion on this is so hard because I know that I'm prejudiced against it from the start, right? Like I know I don't want to like it, and so I'm not being fair when I look at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean there is that element, isn't there? We we are a we are a bunch of people that have been let down repeatedly. So I I, get, I am trying to see the hope in this uh, in this update, guys. I am I am really trying to see the light. Of the well, it's not even bad. It's it's that I just I don't like integrating vehicles in my infantry squads. Like I've been I've been really resistant to it when we've experimented with it before. Yeah, That's a whole but, different conversation. I know that there's yeah, we've had moments of success, but it's really been tough uh, to manage in the past, and it's kind of changed the role of the infantry section in ways I haven't enjoyed. Uh, I'll tell you what, so we'll find a vehicle right for, for for your squad. We just haven't found it right yet. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Keep experimenting. <laughs> so one thing I want to I wanna just um, mention, because I, I, I realized I slipped one, one slide. I'm not going to go looking for it now because there's no point. It, it only showed that basically vehicles can have different tiers. So basically you can start with a tier 1 armored car and towards the late game where they're normally useless and they're like a can of sardinas that just blows up every 30 seconds, um, they're actually going to get bonuses. So you can get a, like a level 3 armored car on the um, end of the war that's basically more buffed up, has more HP, more damage maybe, we'll have to see. So that's that's another thing I wanted to, to bring up briefly, I guess. Where, where do you live where a can of sardines explode? Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, you don't need to know that. Eric. It's fine. Mm, resisting. Well, that means so when you, when you <laughs> prototype the first set of vehicles, it, it has the prototype tier, which is the weakest, the weakest of the set. And once it gets selected, I mean, the tier two means it's, uh, well, sorry, the tier two means it's the standard, which is what we have now. And then the last, the late game tier, the chat which tier, will be the upgraded version. Yes, the chat tier. The, the chat tier. Yeah. Thick ass boy. Easy. Speaking that of thick ass boy, uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's give it over to Dark here, and uh, he can talk about this thick ass boy. Damn, he thick. God damn. <laughs> so this this is this is an interesting thing because this comes with uh with a slide of information. I don't know if you're aware about it, Kaz, but. Uh, the wardens will not be getting a similar version of this because the we fact that they not? are declaring that uh, oh, no, they go no, they're not making vehicles. Uh, so just because they made a colonial siege tank does not mean the wardens will get and this. Theirs. This is our point I was they making make. with the jeeps as well. They get an RPG version of it. We get an MG version of it. So there is going to be differences between the factions vehicles now. Yeah, but like I'm personally hoping, well, aside from stealing, which is going to be extremely common, and odds that are going to probably just exchange vehicles, but aside from that, I'm still hoping there's going to be some sort of um, retro engineer, like reverse engineering mechanic, is what I'm hoping yeah. for. Yeah. And if that's the thing, then I think we're fine. I, I really hope I have my fingers crossed they're actually going to reverse engineer, add it somehow, so you can, um, I don't know, capture a husk of this bad boy and I mean, or whatever I'd, i mean we've talked about this before uh and I'd, i brought up the idea of spending t 10 b mats to paint the vehicle warden or paint the vehicle colonial depending on what factions captured that particular vehicle and i can't really believe that's not in the game yet because i can't mean i can't tell you the amount of times i've almost blown up a a friendly armored car uh, but it's colonial that's come out of the road down the darkness out of me uh you know when i've been in a light tank or something like that you know what i mean it's if you get if you if we had that ability to at least mark the vehicles as our faction, even if they're captured, I think that would go a long way. So, with with this, the, let's talk to the vehicle itself, the Colonial uh, HC Seven Ballista, rocking very very heavy boy, very long boy, and a tall boy. How many mil is that? We don't we don't talk about that. This is all garbage, flavor garbage here for the people who want to do statistics on whatever whatever lore well mind you Klaus like, said this one is this one is actually uh, the only one that was accurate from from default I I don't know Klaus he can correct us you're you're in chat but that's what I understand from him that this is like the the, the only one they actually put in time to get the stats right for it or have 
believable stats, let's call it, let's just say like that. Right. So they said that this is not going to have, this is not going to have a massive range. Like they said it might just outrange the tank by a little. Nothing massive to replace anything, but I feel like it defeats the purpose of, of what it's supposed to be. But I mean, in the end of the day, it's still a, it's still a heavy firepower siege vehicle, which I'm assuming yep. that's all it's going to be for is that's all. It's probably going to have one ammo type and it's just going to be firing, but it's made to be firing. I mean, for its role, it's going to be incredibly effective, uh, especially in like late game war when they're coming up against tier three fobs. If this thing can fire, I'm presuming it, it's for knocking out bunkers. So tier three fobs, highly defensive positions are just going to melt before this thing, because even though it has got a short range, it's got the the armor to be able to push up and make those shots and then reverse backwards if it's got the adequate cover. Look uh, at the way they protect those treads. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just a, it's just a sheet of metal, guys. You know, we can do better in the Warden Empire than that. Uh, according to the lore, we uh, we don't think like that. The main armament it is a it's not a cannon. It's a uh, spigot mortar, which is kind of interesting because I expected that massive thing to go boom. But what you might hear might be uh might be this give me a second yeah yeah like a grenade launcher sort of thing so it's, it's gonna be funny when uh you see this big monstrous thing with a massive cannon and like you hear the engine rolling and then it aims and <laughs> the explosion could could overcompensate don't get me wrong i mean it might be but, funny for the clone you know, I, mean, I, I don't think it's gonna be very funny when we hear it though no yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, we're gonna be screaming but you know i, I would at least would have liked it to just be an actual like a short short cannon howitzer i mean just make it boom the whole way through you know what i mean you don't have yeah, to yeah. make it like underwhelming but it well, is I'm what sure it is a, i'm sure a certain mod will solve that out for us so just to make sure we're on the same page klaus confirmed it's yeah the the statistics of it are actually believable and also on the on the sound aspect dark i think we can get shift to do like a remix of the you know, add it to the soundboard, just do the, <laughs> a remix of the shot there, just, I don't know, he, he can figure something out. Shiv is good with remixes. <laughs> Please don't. Oh, if it, what's his name? Uh, Scott J. He can, he can do justice for, the, for this vehicle. Even though we won't have the flash for it, but... You know, well, next time, we hopefully we're going to be reviewing the Warden specific faction vehicles so yeah let's, let, let's do our predictions now while we can because it's going to be in like three days i'm going to assume it's going to be a uh anti-tank gun i think it's going to be uh you know what's that vehicle the imperial guard get where it's like it's like a it's basically the a main lid no 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 uh the the artillery gun that's just on treads I know what you're talking about the battle list. Yeah, that yeah, that thing. I think it's going to be something like that. I think it's I, going to be some kind of mobile artillery like this is, but it might be like something that's <laughs> more exposed or something like that. Someone said a fucking wall. Oh my god, that was funny. I'm thinking more like a tricycle with a revolver taped to the front. <laughs> so that's, maybe that's I was maybe I was better at taking out tanks. There is is better at taking out buildings. Well, that makes sense. Considering we're supposed to be the defensive faction, I would just like to see a fucking mine, uh, mine layer. Can you imagine just going around, just spitting mines everywhere? I mean, oh my god! Oh my god! That would be insane. I, I, it's not that obviously. It's not that, but you know, I, I thought I would just give something. Up. <laughs> Can you imagine the hit if uh, if the colonial has got this big armored behemoth, and we get like a coastal mine mine layer? I mean, the Warden Navy would be, like, ecstatic, but everybody else would be like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, so it's, it's, real, it's real BS, because um, Kaz, I think the, the beans have been spilled. They've declared that we are the defensive faction and the Colonials are the aggressive one, meaning that their whole way of vehicle variation is going to derive from that statement. Colonial vehicles will be more aggressive and more about brute force and overwhelming power, while Wardens are... Well, they didn't say much about us. They just... You know, we're just uh, whatever yeah, it is. It's not that. I think they're going to talk more about the wardens and then on the next uh, dev stream or whatever they do. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're, I think, we're gonna. I, I mean, I think it's been. I think it's that's been pretty obvious from the get go. 
um, about the the uh, defensive and aggressive thing, to tell you the truth. But we'll go into more about that later on. Yeah, I feel like uh, it's a good moment to to move on our our last topic uh, here, which is basically the game and uh, the lore direction. I know Kaz is like really not into lore stuff, and the lore. And, uh, so I'm gonna invite. For what it's worth, <laughs> I've actually hit my time limit anyway, uh, so I have to oh. run in any case com conveniently. So I well, no appreciate problem. the invite. It's an honor having the hero of blemish among us once more. It's been a pleasure, guys. I'll catch you later. So yeah, later guys, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. What a fucking guy. <laughs> so on on the let's let's take it one at a time, I guess, because I don't really. I mean, you could combine them, but on the game direction, oof, like you know, everything right now sounds cool. I think we can all agree it sounds cool. My main grievance is always has been and always will be um what happened to the stuff we lost along the way you know the yeah. fuel containers that we were supposed to put next to the mines the squad system the uh, operation system where are all those systems where is you know like uh, you know where's the multiple squads why did we uh, go to a squad system that barely allows our logic to sit in the same squad to a system you know the, the old one was like far away from perfect but at least we could have had the entire clan into it and i could have give uh officer to whoever i needed to manage it without me having to leave my computer on for three days so somebody doesn't drop our logi uh stockpile and so on i mean i can't i, I honestly can't believe that it's 2020 uh, and i've been playing this game for a number of years now and even still, we don't have like a decent squad system. And it's one of those things where you think that it's going to be in the next update because it's always the next update because you're thinking this thing is so simple and so integral to the uh, to the game that it's going to be you know really expanded upon. It's going to be made into what it needs to be for large units of people, large groups of people wanting to work together on Foxhall. And that's the hardest part of the game, really. The, the uh, the organization of the squad and the squad system at the moment is ridiculous. Uh, and I, I really think that they need to like seriously think about working on the squad system because it's it's gone on for far too long now. I mean, it's been years since it's, it should have been implemented, really. But more and more, we're seeing uh, uh, these mods coming in that are, are just you know filling in the gaps where they need to be filled in. So maybe we'll see something like that in the future. Yeah, that audio one that replaces all the sound effects, like, it, it really breathed new air into me when I first, like, downloaded it. And it's like, oh, my God, you like, just, just hearing the rifle, hearing the rifle sound like an actual, like, an actual gun with impact it still does the same thing. But I feel like, I feel like a badass shooting it. And that's, I feel like, that's what a game needs to do right, is to make you feel yeah, like a badass shooting a gun. Yeah. Not, so, I mean, if you haven't got that mod, guys, I highly highly recommend that you uh you go and take a look at that but i uh, don't want to talk about that too much but uh highly recommend we're not paid to sponsor that guy so anyways <laughs> the game the the, the lore hold, well, i can steer this for this uh oh, i find it funny that don't i mean don't get me wrong everyone knows that we're fighting in war in warden territory you know the, the great glorious walls that are supposed to be keeping the colonials at bay they're the ones like hiding it and hiding inside it and using it against us and it's you know haha it's funny but the faction that has in game the most wins and has the most aggressive you know clans in there it's like it's funny how they just like nah these guys are uh, these guys are defensive and it's it, it's both a good it's both an interesting factor but also pretty bad because you can't be always always being defensive is not a good thing in games it's like you, you never no. really have a a good strategy or what's the word i'm not sure that's the what they're really going for i just think they're theming it after defense. yes yes so, so i don't think it's we necessarily will always be on the defensive now it's I, just our vehicles will favor a certain type of tactic for instance defend repel counter attack will probably be our um you know thing I feel like I need to clarify here, just in case. Uh, from what I read, Mark actually tried to to bring this up. Well, not officially, because 
they never do bring it up officially, but uh, he did try to bring it up that, um, you know, calling us the defensive action doesn't mean necessarily we're not going to have the tools to play offensive. But, it, you know, it, it, it sends that message, though. I think that's about uh, everybody's problem here, Avitus, because like, uh, if you guys remember, KFC sort of declared something on the lines of, if you like RT, then you're on the wrong faction if you're on the <laughs> Warden side. <laughs> Which is um, which is pretty funny because somebody pointed out that the wardens actually have at least two clans that are 100% focused on artillery, which is Mag and 128th. While there's no there's no uh, artillery clans in the colonial faction, and I think this is just me, and I don't I, I don't intend to pry upon Matt's vision of his lure, but I, I think the lure in any game should be a bit on on with what's happening in the game so if i would be making lure which i would never be doing because i am bad at it i would I mean, be really looking inside of the game right like something that needs to be said about the law on foxhole i mean and the way it, i mean it's been written or for lack of a better word hasn't been written you know what i mean at the start of this when i started watching the dev stream and stuff like that they always need wanted to emphasize about how mysterious they wanted to keep the law behind foxhole and they didn't want to reveal why the two factions were really at war and things like that and they wanted to keep things like at arm's length and everything that they've done seems to be done at this arm's length sort of like perception of the war uh, and they even said a couple of times that they, you know, they want us to fill in the gaps and things like that and make our own story. You know, the game is the story and things like that. But now that's happened. You know, we're, we're a couple of years down the line and uh, clans and, and, you know, the way that we've influenced uh, the wardens, you know, obviously having a, a very big 40k aesthetic and things like that and seeing Callahan as the god emperor and things like that. I really think that that's um, threatening in a way to uh, the way, their vision of the law. And I think that's why they may be going a bit more into it. But even just in the last dev stream, he's, uh, uh, is it, I think it's Matt, is it Mark that's in charge of the law? Um, Matt. Matt, that's the one. Uh, Matt, he, he's, he does this thing where he'll, um, he'll be asked a question about the law and then he'll say something along the lines of, he doesn't want to go too deeply into that. But we're three years in now, and he's been saying that for three years. So he can't really be surprised that people are coming along and making law for Foxhole that everybody's getting behind because of the lack of it in the in the actual uh, official capacity of it. You know what I mean? So I think if they're wanting us to be uh, more themed and have a, a bigger uh, realization of what would you know why are we defensive why are the colonials attacking and things like that i think that would go a long way and people might say that you know law doesn't really matter and things like that but i think that one of the biggest things that is underrated on foxhole and the reason why the warden faction is more often unified than not is because of uh you know this little thing you know this funny little thing that we've got about callahan and things like that like that's really a force to unite us you know what i mean as, as as silly as it is you know shouting for callahan is really a unifying factor between people that might not have ever met each other before on foxhole or they've never spoke to each other before but they both know that shouting for callahan means that they're um you know passionate for the warden faction or something like that the colonials have never had something like that you know what i mean so and they tried and they tried to do the uh the best the best way possible getting the actual opposite of of the righteous callahan man and uh yeah i don't even Captain know Jack's name. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you guys uh have captain bird's eye in your country but it's a brand of fish fingers go look it up it's uh it's callahan basically so yeah Right, guys. So uh, we've been going for more than an hour now. I think uh, let's try and keep it. Let's uh, let's try and keep it more uh, succinct. Let's start on a good note, and I think we've covered a lot for for one uh, for one so, sitting. Dude, this has been a fucking train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. Fuck he's just pieced out. He's like, fuck. He already said <laughs> earlier he was like sleeping during this, and then he just outright just left. Like, fuck. I almost left too. <laughs> Hey, he's a guest. He can leave. You're not a guest. You're like stuck here forever. Remember, like this. If you want to engage in the corner, he's he's our he's our pet greenskin. If you don't know, that. no, no <laughs> box, please. <laughs> 
Right. We feed him colonial. Well, if only we had enough colonials to keep him fed, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If only. If only. Still angry. So, uh, we definitely want to hear from you guys as well. Like, feel free to hit me up, for example, if, uh, I don't know, if you guys liked it, if you didn't like it, if you want to see something or not. Um, we're going to try and keep it at least once a month. That's like, we're just going to start, like, instead of promising you dev streams every two weeks and then saying we can't do it. <laughs> well, well, you're projecting that, Razor. <laughs> no, I, I'm, just, I'm being mean. I'm being mean. No, I'm sorry. Don't be mean here. This is Twitch. Um, no, we're going to try and keep it at least once a month. If you can do it more often, then we'll do it more often. If we cannot, then we're just going to keep it once a month. We'll, we'll see how it is. I would guess. If certain things come out, then we might do, you know, something on the evening if we badly need to react to it or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that it, I'll just say this again for the people that weren't here at the start of the screen, uh, stream. The whole idea behind this is that we think that um, the community doesn't really have a stream or uh, a place to go to vent uh, what they believe is, uh, you know, the truth or, you know, maybe uh, not sugarcoating things. Um, and really getting things off your chest in, to do with uh, Foxhole. Um, so if you have something that you feel that needs to be said or anything like that, you know, you, you're more than welcome to uh, ask us. We're going to do question and answer sessions and stuff like that uh, in later episodes. So we can uh, we can think about doing that in the future. Sure thing. Um, also, like, if you guys want to get notifications and shit, I'm not going to bore you. Just follow. You're going to hear Avitus give you... Some flavor text. There's nothing to to spam, lose there. Spam the follows. Thank I'm you telling you, it'll be worth it. Well, well worth your money. Let me time. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Kimi, for demonstrating. That's basically exactly how it works there. Kimi Keep has it coming, people. If we need at least fifty, so we can start milking. <laughs> Jesus, There's another Christ. special thing there. Doug. It's gonna be a five dollar entry fee next time, guys. Just like at least oh, laugh after. You non-essential scum. <laughs> Yeah, oh, okay. there we go. Close. He, I'm shocked he didn't follow the first sign he saw this, but he was, he, he was, go. he was making sure he was like getting uh, Thank you an for insurance. Non-essential scum. Shiv just coming in hard. Thanks, Shiv. Just, just make another announcement. Please follow. <laughs> you don't have to watch it. Just come in, follow, and leave. What? Why you don't want like Avid to saying the same thing over and over again? This is really entertaining. You guys should see what I've uh, put aside for later, but I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> all of these all of these sounds, by the way, guys, like I have no idea they're getting recorded. Riz just records me all the time. He's, he's, he's really creepy that way. Don't, don't tell her the same, please. Don't, don't. It, makes me, it makes me afraid. Like uh, I got to keep on my toes just to not say anything horrible. I'm pretty sure I already spilled some beans on some questionable things, but uh, that's all. I'm, I'm at his mercy now. I guess me and me and Avatar are it, just too lazy to record this Romanian. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be just fine. Um, okay, guys, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Um, any any last words, uh, Avatus? <laughs> uh, do you want to pass me the pepper dock? Here you go, buddy. Take that. Okay, and uh, that salt right there. Okay, get a bit of that salt. There you go. And dried from colonial tea is this, guys. Colonial tea so into the pan. Okay, cooking that grenade real well. Remember, guys, you gotta cook that grenade before you throw it at those heretics. Okay, cook it well, fry it up, nice and good until you get a good little, good little. That's how you know when it's ready. Gordon Ramsay, five star. Okay, and remember, guys, you you don't stay in those foxholes. You get out of them. He charged the enemy. Catch Fight him like a real man. <laughs> Bye, guys.